Cheers, too. Tomorrow will be the warmest day out of the week. Highs in the upper 80s, some of us possibly reaching 90 degrees. A few showers and storms over the next few days, and then a whole lot of rain and a cool down Sunday. All those details coming up. Right now on News Channel 6 at 11, a second suspect is wanted in the Jamila Smith case. We'll have the latest on the investigation in Aiken County. Also, it has more than half a million Georgians no longer have Medicaid. We'll tell you why. And what exactly will South Carolina do with the mystery money it found? We're talking big money. What one lawmaker is proposing as your news at 11 starts now. Live from Television Park, this is WJBF News Channel 6 at 11. Montgomery. I'm Brad Means. Thanks for joining us. Coverage you can count begins with the ongoing investigation of a missing 30-year-old mother in Aiken County. A second suspect is now wanted in the case. Nikita Dennis has more. Jamila Smith, a mother of two, went missing last December. Her ex-boyfriend is behind bars for murder. Now his cousin is also wanted in the ongoing investigation. Investigators say Daniel Harmon was their first suspect arrested and charged in the connection to the murder investigation of Jamil Smith. Now Harmon's cousin, Brian Hampton Jr., is warned as their second suspect. Smith's mother tells me Hampton is a close friend of the family. It's hurtful because we spent a lot of time together, families, spent a lot of holidays together, and we, we know BJ, myself, my husband, my family. Um, and his parents, we know his parents and his children and siblings, and it's bothersome to know that he would have helped. Investigators with the Aiken County Sheriff's Office say many written statements and evidence led them to this point. We've already been looking for and, and brought in available resources, uh, which include other agencies, uh, both in South Carolina as well as in Georgia, uh, federal agencies to try to locate him. McCraw says she believes others may be involved. I'm sure that the family knew about all of this when we were looking for Millie in the very beginning on Saturday, December 2nd, when we didn't began calling their family saying, hey, we hadn't seen her. And, you know, they weren't um, answering our text messages or calls. They still need help to bring Jamila home. You know, we're asking the community to, to continue looking out for him, keeping their ears and eyes open. And, you know, we ask that even friends and family of the Harmon family or in the Aiken area, anybody to speak up if you know anything. This case is not going to be closed until it's adjudicated in court. Um, well, once he's in custody, we're going to continue to look for um, Jamila. Uh, to try to get her return to her family. Captain Abdullah also says they've been looking into where Smith's body might be, but so far, there are no leads. In Aiken County, Nikita Dennis, WJBF News Channel 6. We are going to take a moment now to take a first check of our weather. Here's meteorologist Jenna Petracci. Well, it was a mostly dry day. The clouds were here all day long, though, with temperatures very warm once again. And now as we take a look at Live Viper 6, notice some green popping up. All very, very light rain. Most of the CSRA still dry, but some of this rain making its way towards the metro. Right now it's over McDuffie County, right over Thompson, Warrington as well, Norwood. And as we look closer to the metro, notice some of it starting to make its way into Richmond County and Columbia County. So heads up Grovetown, Evans, Martinez, Augusta. All of this rain moving in within the next few minutes. Our Terry Lambert Hyundai Skyview Cam now at Washington Road showing the dry conditions, though. Today's high temperature was 83 degrees. The clouds kept us a little bit cooler, at least. But by tomorrow, when the sun comes out, we will be much warmer than that, believe it or not. Low this morning was 55, but check out the temperatures now. We're still in the 70s. 76 in Augusta, 74 in Thompson. Barnwell, you're at 72. Louisville at 71, upper 60s in Millen, a bit cooler, but for the most part, 70s across the board. Winds are coming in from the south. That's helping to keep the temperatures warmer. 
7 miles per hour in Aiken, 3 in Edgefield, 8 in Augusta, and 7 in Thompson as well. So a southerly breeze and a lot of cloud cover all across the two states. Just this one batch of rainfall. Notice there was a lot of lightning just an hour ago across the Atlanta area. Now all of that lightning has faded, so the showers are really weakening by the time they make it into the CSRA. So this is nothing significant to worry about. Possibly some sprinkles around 5 o'clock in the morning. Other than that, dry, partly cloudy cloudy through 6 o'clock, and then the sun will come out around 7 and 8 o'clock. Those clouds will be out of here, low of 62 for tomorrow morning. So a few showers overnight, upper 80s to around 90 degrees for tomorrow afternoon, staying mostly dry through Saturday. But then as we go into Sunday, a lot more rain moving in, along with a big cool down. All those details coming up shortly, but back to you, Brad. All right, Jenna, thanks. It could be a possible setback for a chicken plant looking for a spot in Aiken County. The company out of North Carolina was going to invest $185 million here to create 900 jobs. Aiken's County Council rejected a plan to set a fee for them instead of having them pay taxes. And they were concerned about wastewater treatment needs. This plant would use approximately 1.7 million gallons per day of capacity at the Horse Creek Wastewater Treatment Plant. And neither the city of Aiken nor Aiken County have that extra capacity to offer them at this point in time. So what happens from here? Nobody knows. They do say, leaders do, that they're focused on bringing in high-profit, high-tech investments. More than a half million Georgians are out of Medicaid coverage due to a lack of paperwork. Research shows around half of those ended up re-enrolling in Medicaid, picking up coverage through the Affordable Care Act, Medicare, or an employer. State lawmakers did not expand Medicaid this year, but instead pushed for Georgia's Pathways Program, an alternative which would provide health care coverage to low-income adults. You could expand Medicaid, which would expand the pool of patients that can go to those facilities and would have some ability to pay all across the state. Georgia has not accepted the Medicaid expansion, which would allow more uninsured to have that basic level of coverage, which again was propping up a lot of these smaller community hospitals. If you have been denied coverage, the state says you can file an appeal hearing. You can find out more online at staycovered.ga.gov or call 1-877-423-4746. Now an update on a story we brought you last month. South Carolina lawmakers calling for the state treasurer. Justice history through a brand new book. A comic book. The story of the golden blocks. News Channel 6 at 11 continues. And it's not just the temperatures that are high this week, it's also those pollen levels. But notice on Sunday, they finally start to drop down a bit, and that will be due to a lot of rain moving in. A look at the future cast. This is going to be 350. What makes me proud to be a part of Piedmont is the relationships I've developed. I can say that some of my best friends work at this hospital. We met in the NICU at Piedmont. We did. It was just one of those things where it was an instant friendship. Our unit is really good at supporting each other. It is such a blessing to have people have your back. No matter what comes in the door, I know that we can handle it. We are proud to be Piedmont. The Live 5 or 6 Skyview Network, sponsored by Terry Lambert Hyundai. Now, your most accurate forecast with WJBF Live 5 or 6. Welcome back. Here's another look at Live Viper 6. It's been a dry day, but now we're seeing the rain move in. Notice we have a few light showers around, mostly in our northwestern counties. Some of this rain making its way into the metro now, all over Tolliver County, Warren and McDuffie. Thompson and Warrenton covered with this light rainfall. And as we shift over towards the east, most of downtown completely dry, but we are seeing this rain now into the western portion of Columbia and Richmond County, right over Harlem. There's the latest scan moving into Grovetown as well. So expect this rain around the next 
30 minutes or so, and then other than that, it will be dry. Here's our Terry Lambert Hyundai Skyview Cam in Aiken. Dry over there and pretty warm still. Temperatures in the 70s, 76 here in town. Southwest wind of 8 miles per hour. Dew points in the mid-50s. We're up to 69 now in McCormick. Those temperatures starting to fall. But for the rest of us, the 70s. 74 in Thompson, 72 in Sparta. Aiken, you're at 73. 72 in Bamberg and 69 as well down in Millen. Satellite and radar showing this blink in a cloud cover across the CSRA. And this is it for the rain. Notice as we zoom out here, we had some lightning, some pretty strong storms just to the west of Atlanta, but it all fizzled out. So once this batch of rain moves in, we will be done with it. So for your Thursday, a dry day, back to sunshine. Temperatures starting out in the mid-60s, climbing to the upper 80s. And it is possible that some of us could make it to 90 degrees. Our record at Augusta Bush Field for this day is 91, set back in the 1800s. Now, I don't think we'll make it to this record, and we definitely won't beat it, but we are coming close. I'm going with 89 in Augusta. 89 for your Friday as well, 87 on Saturday. Big drop-off down to 70 on Sunday. That'll feel pretty cool compared to being close to 90. And then believe it or not, upper 60s return to the forecast on Monday, but it won't last for long. So enjoy that while it is here. Our rainfall chance is up to 30% for Friday and Saturday. Not a washout, but you'll need to keep an eye on radar if you have any outdoor plans. And then for Sunday, good bit of rain moving in, and that's what'll bring the cool down. So on Saturday, a warm day with just a few showers and storms on Sunday a bit of a different story. So on Futurecast tonight at midnight, there's that batch of rain moving in. A few showers until around 4 or 5 a.m. and then the clouds will push off towards the south and the rest of our Thursday will be dry and sunny. Friday morning, possibly a few storms and then again Friday night along this cold front passage. This stalls out on Saturday, so Saturday's pretty much a repeat of Friday. And then we'll have this low pressure system move in and that'll bring more widespread rain on Sunday, especially Sunday night. Our lows tonight in the low 60s. Highs tomorrow around 88 to 90 degrees, well above average. And that 10 day forecast showing the warm temperatures lasting through Saturday with that 30% chance of rain. 70% chance for Sunday with the cool down. Notice the lows are going all the way down into the upper 40s, at least briefly, and then warming back up. Back to you. All right, thank you so much, Jenna. A comic book based on the Augusta Golden Blocks is out for anyone to read. The artists and consultants for the Golden Blocks Legends comics held a panel discussion at Augusta University, talking about their first comic, Lucy Craft Laney, Mother of the Children of the People. Yeah, they discussed the... Get special offers on the 2024 RX 350. me proud to be a part of Piedmont is the relationships I've developed. I can say that some of my best friends work at this hospital. We met in the NICU at Piedmont. We did. It was just one of those things where it was instant friendship. Our unit is really good at supporting each other. It is such a blessing to have people have your back. No matter what comes in the door, I know that we can handle it. We are proud to be Piedmont. Five or six Skyview Network, sponsored by Terry Lambert Hyundai. Now, your most accurate forecast with WJBF Live Viper 6. Welcome back. Here's another look at Live Viper 6. It's been a dry day, but now we're seeing the rain move in. Notice we have a few light showers around, mostly in our northwestern counties. Some of this rain making its way into the metro now, all over Tolliver County, Warren and McDuffie. Thompson and Warrenton covered with this light rainfall. And as we shift over towards the east, most of downtown completely dry, but we are seeing this rain now into the western portion of Columbia, Richmond County, right over Harlem. And there's a latest scan moving into Grovetown as well. So expect this rain around the next 30 minutes or so, and then other than that, it will be dry. Here's our Terry Lambert Hyundai Skyview Cam in Aiken. Dry over there and pretty warm still. Temperatures in the 70s, 76 here in town. Southwest wind of 8 miles per hour. Dew points in the mid-50s. We're up to 69 now in McCormick. Those temperatures starting to fall. But for the rest of us, the 70s. 74 in Thompson, 72 in Sparta. Aiken, you're at 73. 72 in Bamberg and 69 as well down in Millen. Satellite and radar are showing this blink in a cloud cover across the CSRA, and this is it for the rain. Notice as we zoom out here, 
there. We had some lightning, some pretty strong storms just to the west of Atlanta, but it all fizzled out. So once this batch of rain moves in, we will be done with it. So for your Thursday, a dry day, back to sunshine. Temperatures starting out in the mid-60s, climbing to the upper 80s. And it is possible that some of us could make it to 90 degrees. Our record at Augusta Bush Field for this day is 91, set back in the 1800s. Now, I don't think we'll make it to this record, and we definitely won't beat it. But we are coming close. I'm going with 89 in Augusta. 89 for your Friday as well. 87 on Saturday. Big drop off down to 70 on Sunday. That'll feel pretty cool <laughs> compared to being close to 90. And then believe it or not, upper 60s return to the forecast on Monday, but it won't last for long. So enjoy that while it is here. Our rainfall chances up to 30% for Friday and Saturday. Not a washout, but you'll need to keep an eye on radar if you have any outdoor plans. And then for Sunday, good bit of rain moving in and that's what will bring the cool down. So on Saturday, a warm day with just a few showers and storms. On Sunday, a bit of a different story. So on Futurecast tonight at midnight, there's that batch of rain moving in. A few showers until around 4 or 5 a.m. and then the clouds will push off towards the south and the rest of our Thursday will be dry and sunny. Friday morning, possibly a few storms and then again Friday night along this cold front passage. This stalls out on Saturday, so Saturday's pretty much a repeat of Friday. And then we'll have this low pressure system move in and that'll bring more widespread rain on Sunday, especially Sunday night. Our lows tonight in the low 60s. Highs tomorrow around 88 to 90 degrees, well above average. And that 10-day forecast showing the warm temperatures lasting through Saturday with that 30% chance of rain. 70% chance for Sunday with the cool down. Notice the lows are going all the way down into the upper 40s, at least briefly, and then warming back up. Back to you. All right, thank you so much, Jenna. A comic book based on the Augusta Golden Blocks is out for anyone to read. The artist and consultants for the Golden Blocks Legends comics held a panel discussion at Augusta University. Talking about their first comic, Lucy Craft Laney, Mother of the Children of the People. Yeah, they discussed the reason they chose this as their first story and why they think a comic book is a great way for students to learn about history. You know that we learn. Uh, better when we are, you know, engaged in content and when it matters to us. And so using someone like Lucy Craft Laney, who's so important here in Augusta and so well known, um, is really just, it just makes it a, a great um, instructional resource. And they're currently in the works of a second comic on another empowering local person. So ahead of Bowie Whistleblower testifies on Capitol. Favorite coupons. We've been saving the CSRA money for over 30 years. The Scholar Athlete Awards are brought to you by Jefferson Energy Cooperative, Rebath of Augusta, McDonald's, and WJBF News Channel 6. Now, WJBF sports coverage you can count on. The Braves sitting in first place in the National League East started the month with a sweep of the defending National League champion Arizona Diamondbacks. That's their only sweep of the season so far, Wednesday a chance to sweep the Houston Astros, who played for the American League pennant the last season. Top of the fifth, tie at 1-1, and there's a healthy Ronald Acuna. Love to see that. And he takes that yard to give the Braves a 2-1 lead. Believe it or not, his first home run of the season for the reigning NL MVP. Top of the eighth, down 4-3. Orlando Arcia, the most exciting play in baseball. Not really, but it works. Sacrifice fly to bring in Austin Riley for the tying run. So we go to extra innings. Top of the 10th. Runner on third, Arcia. More Orlando magic. Through the left side of the infield. That brings in the go-ahead run for the Braves. And then Astros threatening one out. Runners at the corners have a double play started by Arcia to end it. Braves sweep the Astros back home this weekend against the defending World Series champion, Texas Rangers. Just days after another exciting Masters tournament wrapped up, reigning champion Scotty Scheffler and the PGA Tour's other top pros are in Hilton Head this week for a little more relaxed RBC Heritage, which is now a designated event with big prize money and all the top PGA Tour players. A quick turnaround for the soon-to-be dad, Scotty Scheffler. Yeah, Sunday was, was a great day. I uh, was fortunate to play well and, and win the tournament. Um, Went home on, on Sunday night. We got home pretty late, and so I just, just relaxed at home the last couple of days with Meredith. And then, um, yeah, it's good to be back here at Hilton Head. I like the, like the golf course. I, I, um, I'm trying to focus a bit more on rest in my preparation this week. 
Richard Scheffler tees off at 10.30 on Thursday with Jordan Speed. This week's WJBF Scholar Athlete of the Week is Richmond Academy's Carolina Rivers. She's a two-sport star for the Musketeers, plays volleyball and soccer every year. She's been named All-Region First Team in both soccer and volleyball, and she was a Georgia Coaches Association All-Star invite for volley volleyball during her sophomore and junior seasons in the classroom, about number one in her class, 4.6 GPA, earning the USA Certificate of Merit. Parents and coaches say she's a hard worker and a leader for her peers. I'm super excited. I've worked really hard all four years, and so this is just an awesome accomplishment, um, an awesome recognition just from the community and the school. You know, I think that she wanted to find success in her sports, and she certainly did that. I think she, it was, it's been awesome to watch her go from a freshman on a varsity team to the senior on a varsity team um, and just be a leader for the younger ones. I think just watching them grow and learn how to manage their time, because between, between the sports and academics, there's just little, little downtime. The time management and the allocation of their time and, and making the most of it has, has been a big part of that growth for them. Uh, it's amazing. When she came in as a freshman, I thought she'd win this award four years later. She came in with all the tools I didn't really think I needed to do anything with the player that she was. And then just watching her grow and grow and grow, um, I just knew that leadership would take place, being a mentor would take place, and being an amazing athlete would take place. And that's happened, and it's grown um, exponentially through the past four years. And Carolina plans to go to the University of Georgia to study medicine and play club volleyball. Congratulations. We'll be right back. Act us today and let us show you what it means to have a winning team on your side. Let's face it, news is complicated. That's why WJBF.com makes it easy. Get clear, accurate stories with Don't Waste Your Time. Plus, get the latest video one click with WJBF Plus. Get it all at WJBF.com. Finally tonight, the end of an era for a famous restaurant chain. A report from Bloomberg says Red Lobster is considering filing for bankruptcy. The report says debt issues and expenses like labor costs are to blame. Now, this does not necessarily mean Red Lobster will disappear. It would just be a way for them to restructure their debt. The news still led a lot of people on social media to proclaim their love for cheddar biscuits and say they're <laughs> going to make a run to the lobster before it's too late. Please don't let it be true. <laughs> we were just saying that here. We better, we better get it. another visit yeah. down. <laughs> yeah, oh, and I was just thinking that. But it's yeah. funny. I think all of us, we talk about how much we love the biscuits, but yeah. we don't go enough. I love that place. I'll start going more. I haven't been in years. Definitely need to go. <laughs> Sunny skies tomorrow. Very warm day. Rain over the weekend with a cool down. And that's our report for now. Thanks for watching. Have a great night. Love it.